Hi guys, in this video, we'll start working on our utils folder. So in your utils folder, in your environment, let's create a file called env.go. In your HTTP, you'll create a new file called response.go. And in your logger folder, you'll create a new file called logger.go, okay? And in your environment.go file, what you'll do is so you already know that every package, every folder, uh, the file inside every folder, or, your, or all the files inside every folder will belong to the same package. So this is package A and B. This makes it easy for us to import those uh, packages into other files, right? That's why I use this package kind of um, format. And we'll have a function called get environment, which basically helps us to get all the environment variables, right? And there will be some default values and returns a string. So right now, what environment are you on? So you'll say os.get environment. You'll be using the OS package. And we'll process the environment, um, whatever has been passed here, we'll process that variable, a and b, all right? And if environment is zero, like or nothing is there, blank empty string, then you'll return the default value. All right, otherwise you'll return the environment. This is it, this is it. So this is the small little file that I wanted to create for the environment to get to help us get uh, which environment we are on and all the environment variables. And now let's head over to our response file, all right? And before the response file, actually let's tackle our logger file because that's simpler to make. Again, as you know, it'll be a single package because uh, it's a, it's in the size of the folder called logger, so this file will belong to a package called logger, and we'll import the log package. So as you can see here, we're making the project so modular, right? The logger and is a different folder, uh, and all of this is inside utils, right? So we have an environment and a response uh, file and a logger file. All of these are in different folders and different packages of their own, and they belong to the utils folder. So. <clears throat> This makes our complete project very modular, very easy to find out where is what, uh, you know, and find the location of the file set easily. So we have two functions. Uh, for logging, we either panic, right, uh, put out the panic errors, or we put out some information. Here we'll have the message that we want to print out, which will be string, and the error. And if error that we've received is not equal to nil, then we want to panic and say message comma error and your info also will have message which will be a string and data which will be an interface and here you log out message comma data perfect so now let's come to the response file which is uh, the most important file here and this will be called the history tree package and here I need um, a couple of packages. I need to use the JSON package. I need to use the log uh, package and the net slash HTTP package. And now I want to define what type of response my file will, <coughs> uh, my project or my program will send, all right? So the response will be of type struct. It will have a status, which will be like you know, 500, 200, that kind of status, right? The kind of status that you get back from the server. And here you'll put these backticks, you'll say JSON, and it's defined as status. And there will also be the result, which will be interface, JSON, and result, okay? So now we want to work on our functions. So the first function that we have is the new response function. So we'll get response back from this. And we'll accept a couple of parameters that we have defined right now. And then uh, we'll have a function which will be a struct method. So this is a struct method of type response, which we have defined the struct as response. And the function is called bytes. And it returns a slice of bytes. Then we have a string function. Again, it's a struct method. If you don't know what struct methods are, do take a look. 
So very easy, straightforward kind of a concept. So you have byte here, again. Um, actually, sorry, I wrote, rewrote the same function again. So this, in this case, it'll be string, and you get back a string. So the main function in this file that you want to work on, which is again a struct method, will be a send response, and there will be w http dot response writer and r, which is http dot request. And now we'll define different functions for uh, different type of statuses. So first we have status no content. Then we'll have, which is basically our 200 status, right? Then you have a bad request status, so you'll say func status bad request. Then you'll have your not found. This is 400. We'll have func status not found and 405. What we're defining here is we're defining all types of responses that our program can uh, send out and we're standardizing all of that, right? So this is a really great practice. If you want to follow it in production, it's a really great practice. You're just standardizing all the type of, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? This is the response that your program sends out. So func status method not allowed. Otherwise, your backend will just keep giving 500 server error, which doesn't serve a lot of purpose, right? Because we don't actually come to know what's happening inside the program. And we're not able to find the issue and error quickly. And let's create these curly braces because we'll be creating some type of uh, definition inside these functions. And then you have a 409, which is status conflict. And you have a 500 error, your standard error. Status internal server error. All right, so we have created the outline of this file. And the next video, we'll continue um, with this file, and then we'll try to also complete our routes.co file in the next uh, one or two videos, all right? Thanks a lot for watching. Do subscribe to the channel so that you come to know when the next video of the series comes out, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.